just getting the analysis board up and ready. So we'll have some insights coming at you via Quackle on each turn. And it looks like for some reason it's saying the pool is just an F. So F to me and D, but I'll get that fixed. <laughs> F. <laughs> Rusimov says, bonjour. Yes, bonjour, right back to you. A uh, couple of eggs. Good day, Colin. Nice to see you. Foundering is here. And we are starting the game with Dave picking up the blank. Ooh, yes. All right. This is uh, the kind of thing he was looking for in one of those four games yesterday afternoon to close it out early. But uh, yeah, great start for Dave so far. Nice rack. Probably playing blunted or something. <laughs> <laughs> so he's got bunted blank. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Jeremy, yeah, so go ahead. Sorry. Can be bunted, uh, blunted, or blunted. Um, the L O D R. I'm guessing it's blunted. We'll have to get confirmation of that, but one of the two for sure. All right, blunted it is. That is a blank L confirmed. Jeremy Hildebrand is alluding to Dave's rack when saying Revelstoke. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, that is a uh, city in the middle of British Columbia, my home province in Western Canada. A lot of people go there to do heli skiing and other really fun uh, mm. winter outdoor sportsing activities. Foundering says keel over. Keel over, wow. Not a valid word, but a cool find. <laughs> uh, Zev, just to confirm, the blank is an L as in Lima, but is blunted. Yeah. For Jesse's rack, uh, Alex suggests be whale as a candidate play. Yeah, he's thinking of playing Y. I, I, I believe it's below um, the E of blunted, which sets up the L which he has on his rack. So that's a possible option. Um, B will scores maybe slight well, around the same, I think, but uh, keeping AO slightly ugly. Yeah, not a big fan of that AO leave. Something like Y or AWA, A-W-A, keeping E-I-L-O would probably be a little bit stronger here. It does look like he has Y kind of singled out on his rack there. And Y goes on the board. Looks like a good play. Yeah, the difference between Y and AWA is that Y sets up the L hook. Um, wait, uh, AWA sets, well, scores slightly more. So it's, uh, I guess, being a bingo down, he thinks that trying to keep the lines open um, is going to be useful. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. Nat Donna, you're back with us in the morning. Nice to see you. Normally you are with us in the afternoon, but as you know, today we only have the morning sessions really. So That's right. uh, nice to have you back. Hopefully instead of uh, the usual, perhaps you brought some caffeinated coffee. You may have missed, I sadly had to get decaf from the breakfast this morning. So I'm taking a little bit of time to wake up. <laughs> 
So it looks like Jesse's play of Way has set up the K for Dave Wiegand here. He can play Lek for 41. Mm. You see he's got over Lek arranged on his rec. That is not a valid word. I believe the Lek is a monetary unit, so. It is. Yeah, Albania. And then you can, yeah. go ahead, sorry. No, I was just going to say that Lek is, one, I think Lek is on one of the Coco bookmarks. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> I should know this. It's like, uh-oh, that is a shining endorsement there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I am getting some bookmarks, uh, I think, with monetary units. Excellent. Well, enjoy your lek. Speaking of lek, it's Enjoy my over lek. You should only lek the appropriate amount. All right, lek is played by Dave, and so he's got a nice lead here of 115 to 22. Good start for Mr. Wiegand. <laughs> Cynical Ad asks, what's the performance enhancing drug testing procedure in Tournament Scrabble? I don't think there is one established. <laughs> Good question, though. Dave plays like he's on all kinds of brain drugs. Just he, he is, incredible yeah. word knowledge. How does he do it? I don't know. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you, when we play variations of games which involve inventing words, he's just as good at that, which is insane. <laughs> yes. It doesn't even have to be valid words. He's good at making them up, too. Yeah. Uh, Jesse has a double double here, um, but I'm not sure whether that's actually well. It probably scores enough to be worth it. Yeah, I don't think Jesse has any plays that keep such amazing leaves that he should sacrifice points for them, right? Like, even if you could keep like E L D or E N D, like those aren't such strong leaves that you want to give up points to fish with them. I don't think. Yeah. Um... Uh, Lord Lifcon's asking, is it blunted or blunted? It's an L. So he can play uh, Palone mm -hmm. with his rack, um, which Palone anagrams to Theo, no. And uh, that scores, I think, 32 points, which probably is one of the better options that he has right now. Yep, there's, uh, there's no scores better than 32 available. Um, he can make plays that hook onto uh, way on the far right, like uh, Pedalo is 28. Also, Opaled, the anagram of Pedalo. But uh, yeah. I think a little better than those. He can play, he can also play a uh, Nope Land for zero. <laughs> There's a lot of things Jesse Day can play for zero points, let me tell you. No. <laughs> <laughs> Pondable. Uh, <laughs> Dopalant to the T, I don't know. <laughs> Speaking of dopey things, uh, Dustin Dude says you are free to use opium at Scrabble tournaments responsibly in the places that allow them, but technically no rule against it. I'm not sure if that's true, but <laughs> we're just going to leave it because I'm not sure. <laughs> Matthew Tenicliffe says, wait, so I've been submitting key samples for nothing. <laughs> as long as you're not mailing them to me, that's fine. You keep right on ahead and doing that. <laughs> uh, top players on Brain Boosters says Ampharoster. Eh, I don't know. Could there's be, could there's be. some deeply kept secrets that we're just not aware of, apparently. We're learning lots of things already on stream this morning. So can anyone see the three uh, letters that that uh, make eights with Jesse's rec? A-D-E-L-N-O-P. There are three. Ooh, I see one. I see there's an R. And then I got nothing. <laughs> Yeah, two more letters. Oh, so Palone goes down. Uh, nice, I think, yeah. yeah, indeed, uh, the, the best play. And I think keeping the deep or weight as well. So still has that spot available. Zev Kaufman points out the last one, Angle Pod, very nice. And further up, Alec mentions Pally Node. Very ah, good. Nice. Everyone's covered yeah. them. Yeah, Ponderal was the one with the R, in case nobody mentioned that. It was a little bit further up. Ah, I got you. Okay. Yeah. So Dave's got some big plays from that L in Lek. He can play Lovage or Lovage. He plays Lovage. That looks very strong. 42 more, and Dave adds to his lead. Showing none of the lovage so far, going for maximal points. He wants to seal the deal with a nice little win here. Well, almost seal the deal. Depends on what Bill does. Yeah. Yeah, if Dave wins this game, it'll put Jesse Day out of contention for first place. But uh, 
there is still a chance that Will Anderson, who's currently on board too, playing David Eldar, could come back and win. We have no update for that game so far, but uh, once we hear any news, we will let you know how that is going. Absolutely. Cat goes down. Um, yeah, it just seems like the yeah. Cat seems pretty good. Yeah. Not much else to consider. Dump that cue and hope for a good draw for a bingo next turn. Which he does have. I mean, he has a pretty good rank now. Probably yeah. going to see a slightly more competitive game. Yeah, and Dave's rack is not very good, so it's going to get interesting. Probably yeah, probably, yeah. yeah, I'm thinking of maybe uh, just playing something like a new run or Ruana just to get rid of letters. Um, hooking on to Y. Yeah, yeah. So Enura making Wayne would be 19 points. And Yurit would be 21. Yeah, those are the kind of plays you're looking at here. And then almost certainly we'll see Jesse play something like Mildest or Missled. Uh, parallel to that, probably. So we're going to have a much closer game one turn from now. Akritur mentions, I guess, Medalist and Mildest both can't be blocked. Uh, exactly. That is correct. So one of those two is likely going down next turn. Uh, also asking, is there an 8 with E for Jesse Day's rack? I believe there's not. I didn't think so, but I wanted to check just to make sure. Yeah, Mildest big goes with A-I-O-U, all the vowels but E. <laughs> Those are the, the four tiles to make an eight with mildest. And then Dustin, uh, which statistics do you mean? If you're talking about the standings on Q, I will type in the chat where you can go and find them. There you go. So and your ran. And your ran yeah. comes down, yeah. So that accomplishes um, the same sort of thing, essentially. Yeah, it's... Uh... I guess in instructed to see that he plays it, you know, going up rather than going down, um, you know, going up, Wayne going up. And I think that make it's harder to parallel on that side. So it's rather intentional. Yeah, he's preventing Jesse from playing seven letter bingos and Jesse did have one. So it's a timely play. Jesse's still yeah. going to bingo, but it's for less points than it would have been before. And at the same time, I think uh, kind of restricting the the p of pelone and the a of pelone as well um yeah you, yeah can't extend that much but it's not going to stop jesse he's trying to be a medalist here <laughs> there you go definitely on right, the podium so comes far. down very nice 69 points there and we got ourselves a much closer game now yeah, I'm wondering if uh, there is something for Dave, though, uh, to respond. He has queries. Yeah. Looks like queries is not going to play. This is a tough position for Dave. His bingo won't play, and there's not a lot of great ways to uh, otherwise score with these letters. He could play cooers, ones that coo uh, into the S in medalist. Yes. That would be 27. Uh, yeah, that, that blocks up. I mean, not blocks up, that kind of blasts up the board. Blasts the board up. Out. <laughs> Open. <laughs> Open, that's the word, yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. This isn't uh, a situation where Dave is far ahead or anything like that. Like if you were up by 80, he'd be trying to shut it down. But if you're up by only 32, you kind of just want to yeah. make a couple of plays and you know, score your points when you can. Yeah, 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 you're right. This isn't like a shut it down kind of position. Uh, I see a, a familiar face in the chat there. Symbol, hello, it's nice to see you here. Someone who's also very familiar with providing a, a Scrabble media across the pond nice to have you here today definitely so 
Say so. no. Tough spot for Dave here. Yeah, I, I think the thing about Coors is that, I mean, it just uh, kind of destroys the the nice ish rack that he has. Um, I I think it's still, I mean, on balance. You know, enough score that enough score that that he should just take it. But I think he's going to think quite hard about it. Definitely. I'll be very tempted to fish in this position, I think. Yeah, there's definitely that temptation here. Um, We've had a request in the chat for uh, Quackle's insight into this, uh, as far as what it likes in this position. Perhaps yeah, you I can let us know. I haven't run the sim yet, but just it, on a static level, it's pretty even between play a play like Coors and a play that fishes away a couple of O's. Um, you know, you could do something like Lou, L-O-O, uh, from the L and Palone. And it's, it's pretty close among a lot of different options, including Lou and Coors. I like Coors, though. Corey's looks oh, like the Corey's option he's going for. Corey's from Dave. Okay. I don't think that's quite as good. Like, you're keeping OS instead of IS. Although, I guess there are more I's you can draw. There's six I's left in the bag versus only four O's. So, that might be Dave's reason. That, that's actually kind of smart now that I think about it. Anyway, updating the scoreboard now. It's going to be Dave Weekend 205, Jesse Dave 146. So, Jesse's kind of sort of down by a bingo at this point. Yes. Yeah. And speaking of a bingo, whether it goes down, uh, a Feijor, uh is technically available on Dave's rack with a blank A. Oh. Yeah. Um, Jill fails with an A on L. Well, but I mean, he, I, I don't think he needs to bingo right now. He can just play off the J for a good score. Yeah. And you know, be left with an extremely good rack with quite a few lines of open. Yeah, jig and QI looks very good, obviously. So I think the question for me is how is Jesse gonna rescue himself in this rack? Uh, I think he has H O U G H lined up, which yeah, it scores it, it plays on the side of uh Cologne. Yeah, 37 so points, cool. but the leave of I.I. is pretty hideous. Mm. Yeah. You got to think, if you're Jesse, like, what's my game plan here? How am I going to come back? Huff puts me within, like, 20 points, but I got I.I. I'm going to need to get very, very lucky to come back with a, with a bad lead like that. Well, just be optimistic and hope that you get something from the sea, perhaps. Uh, yeah, the eyes go well with the C and a lot of words that ended I C. That's true. He would love to pick that blank, but little, little does he know that Dave already has it. That's a very, very important tile here. The second blank, as obviously Jesse needs to get some bingos down here. Yeah, I think I think Jesse is probably thinking, you know, whether he can uh, play something else. Uh, maybe slightly more balanced and uh, still still get some decent score. Uh, maybe get rid of some one of the one of the eyes at least. Uh, he might also be thinking of something creative. Uh, I know. I mean, I know he's a very creative player, so I wouldn't be surprised if he just does something that none of us expect. Definitely. Yeah, but the uh, Hoff seems to be. The standout play in this situation it's just hard to pass up 37 points mm -hmm. the other kind of basic equity plays you could play like hioi h-i-o-i but that's 18 points less that's so much to give up just to get rid of one of your eyes i'm guessing jesse is nearing the point of being resigned to playing half he just Wish he didn't have to. Yeah. Yeah, he seems to have arranged his letters slightly differently, though. I mean, is is he potentially unsure of off? Possible, yeah. Yeah, that would be quite, quite a painful miss, I think. <laughs> I mean, given the state of his rack. 
Looks like he may be going for something else. He's got high in his fingers, briefly. Oh, he's going to play highway up there. OK. Or wait. He's going to play high up high. Uh -huh. Yes. The other high. <laughs> Good morning, Seth Lipkin. It is nice to see you in the chat. Uh, glad to have you here. I see Enoch Nawali further up as well. Welcome back to you as well. Yeah, it seems like it seems like he probably was not sure of. Of, I think that's my guess. I, yeah, could be. I think it's just too many points to pass up for high. Um, yeah, but we can find out in a, later, I guess. Mm -hmm. So for Dave, uh, Jig looks very strong. Thirty-eight points playing Jig, making QI at the bottom, and you block up a uh, possible bingo into that E for Jesse as well. Yeah. Uh, now Jesse has four sin. Oh, okay, okay. Yum yum. Which does play through one letter on the board. Oh, yes, it does. Yeah. There are two anagrams. Yeah, through that C up top. And yet Scott finds them right away. Rubicons and Bursicon. Doesn't look like Dave is going to block those. Oh, I see Rob. Streak. Nice, nice. Very I nice. see Rob Ringsky is in the chat now. Welcome, Rob. Good morning. Uh, yes, that is about the best kind of draw that Jesse Day could have hoped for. Now we just got to see him uh, pull the trigger and get that down. Mm hmm. And now we see we can, like, quite possibly playing sex foil. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> the next turn. Yeah, he does have sex foil. Look at that. Firefox. Yes, Scott Jackson. I still use Firefox sometimes, <laughs> along with Chrome, a mix of both. He's using Firefox right now, I can vouch. Yeah. <laughs> Although it kept crashing yesterday, so I'm not sure if I trust it anymore. I think that was the hotel Wi-Fi. Fair, fair. <laughs> All right, so if Jesse were to play Rubicons, it would put him within seven points, 243, 236, but then Dave would respond with sex foil and Wayne's right away. All right, Rubicons does come down, and I think Jesse's happiness is going to be short-lived here. Yeah, he has actually, I mean, he can play, also play sex foil less slash uh, EHS. I, I, I'm not sure if that scores more because the X is triple. Yeah, that's 88 versus 93 for Wayne. It's five point less. Oh, OK. Yeah, a nice find in the chat of Foxfires. That is also an option here. Ooh, and Jesse seems to have picked up another nice rack. Oh, OK. He can play a bingo at his leisure, you could say. Or we have some people from across the pond who might say leisure. Oh, excuse me. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Add a little bit of that twist. And can anyone spot what Jesse can play after Sex Foibles down? Yeah, I did not see it. Quackle found it for me. I won't spoil. Not an easy word to spot. Yeah, blues here. Rob finds it. There you go. From the B in Blunted, you can play bluesier with all the overlaps. So both players with bingos on their racks now. We have us a game. Wow. Indeed. It's going to be advantage Dave. I mean, his bingo scores more than Jesse's does, and it's going to be his turn after the dust settles here. Mm -hmm. But Jesse's going to be in it. Dave's arranged fox fires on this rack. Interesting. I don't think there's any reason not to play Sex Foil if you see it. It is five points more than Foxfires. Uh, and there's really not any other kind of like positional drawbacks to it I can think of. Sex Foil in the bottom right making Wayne's looks very strong. He might just be arranging each bingo on his rack so he can count the points and then. Yeah, oh, but he no. decides to play Foxfires. Okay. Foxfires, yeah. Jeremy says, Fox Fires is more style points. Well, it's <laughs> it definitely looks like a cool word. More style say. points than sex foil? I, I think sex foil is pretty home, solid Jeremy. as well. 
And uh, Gertie says, to win at PK in this way, what? I believe that's in reference to the definition for Rubicons. I think that's because Rubicon is both a noun and a verb, and it is re referencing itself, the nounal definition from the source dictionary. Uh, I think that's my understanding of that. Here comes Blue's ear. Yep. Jesse does find Blue's ear and play it, and he's going to close the gap again. He's down by 17 points. We've got a close game. And it looks like Dave's draw here is... All disoriented. How dare you, Dave? <laughs> it's a very nice. It, it's a quite a nice wreck, I think. But um, I'm not sure whether you use any use anything on this board. Yeah. No. No S for atomizer. No uh, D for mediator, and so on and so forth. He does have one very nice high scoring play through the R in Blues here at the bottom. He can play Omerta, hooking the A to make JA. And that would score 33. Um, interesting choice here for Dave whether he wants to go for the maximum score with a play like Omerta or, uh, you know, fish for a better leave. You know, there's ways that he can keep a MRT, a IRT, a IMRT if he decides that those are leaves worth keeping in this position. This is complicated. I'm not sure what to think. Yeah, I think it's useful to kind of study the pool at this this, this side of structure mm, and okay. kind of see uh, what are your chances of, of, of I mean, what, what are the threats and what are the opportunities that you have in, in the board uh, rather in the in the back? Yeah, we can bring the pool up on your screen in a moment. There, there's still a lot of tiles in there, but I think it should fit on the screen okay. <laughs> there's uh, 22 to go, which means uh, 15 are in the bag. Uh, it's kind of a funky pool. There's V, W, Y, Y, Z, all still unseen, um, which means drawing a bingo might be harder than it looks. <laughs> um, and so Dave will certainly want to consider that as he thinks about whether to go for, uh, you know, a bingo or whether to simply focus on scoring points and outrunning. Yeah, from this point of view, I think I think you know you're trying to go for the the heavy letters that are gonna net you a good score. Um bingos might come about, but yeah, you gotta be a bit lucky for that for that. I don't I don't think it's really worth fishing on this kind of uh, board as well, especially with uh, not many lines left. I think the S's are all gone. Blanks are gone as well, so you, you, you can't really. I mean, you can't hook the S onto Wayne. Um, the, I think the only, only like three or four lines available don't really score that much. So maybe Omerta is the best play then. Yeah, like Omerta. He has it lined up. Oh, very nice. Yeah. Brett Bass says, Nigel fishes the E and Sims top. <laughs> I'm not sure if fishing the E is going to work out for you here. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe there's a couple of words you can hit, but I don't think that makes it worthwhile yeah. overall. Nigel plays H-E <laughs> <laughs> and Sims top. <laughs> yeah. So Quackle suggesting two plays in particular. One is Omerta. And the other one is just HOM, H-O-M, in the top right corner. It looks like that leave of A-E-I-R-T is pretty potent and results in bingos uh, more often than I would have guessed. About 33% of the time you're going to bingo after HOM. But it is really tough in a spot like this, especially with $10,000 on the line, uh, to leave that much up to chance. And Dave's really looking at chance. Moai alongside Hai very briefly, I think. Nope, never mind. Somewhere else. He had Moai lined up. And then more, moi. Interesting. Looking at some options up there with the H. Maybe not fishing off the E. <laughs> also looking under uh, Fox Fires potentially, says Alec. Oh, Moai there. Yes, yes. That would make sense. Yeah, the thing I like about Umurta is that uh, keeping the eye is actually pretty good in this situation. Um, if you look at the pool, it seems to be, it seems to have zero eyes. Wow, yeah. 
so you know you you retain the the i and the r is definitely a nice letter to have i mean i and r are not that great together but you know i think i think you have to think about what's in the pool and how your how that synergizes with the rack interesting rack that jesse's picked up he's got a lot of uh, scoring consonants and omerta goes down very nice So the lead is an even 50 for Dave Wiegand, 364, 314. And we'll see what Jesse can do here. We've got 10 tiles remaining in the bag. Um, I'm not sure if bingoing is going to happen for, for Jesse. It's just too strange of a tile pool and too strange of a rack he's working with. It's going to be very difficult. Yeah, it seems like he's going to be able to catch up with it, though, because Dave hasn't picked up, uh, you know, scoring letters. Yeah, that's a good point. Not much of anything at all for Dave. No N for Tanduri, because he would be very happy if that were a thing. Yeah. Idolator with an L. Yeah, and none of that. Yeah, but I think the question for me is how is Jesse going to um, keep his, I mean, to score, you know, while keeping a fairly okay-ish leave. Um, he, he does have quite a few spots to score, I think, uh, beside a new run and uh, beside Blue's ear. So double word scores there, probably where he can find the most points. And I think he might want to think about using one on this turn and using another on the next turn. Yeah, Rob, Rob points out in chat that the, the pool's not that bad from Jesse's perspective. Other than those last three tiles, that VYZ, uh, the other ones are pretty decently bingo prone. Um, it'll probably take Jesse multiple turns to groom his rack for a bingo, though. And he's running out of time for that with only 10 tiles in the bag. So it's going to be close. Um, yeah, I mean, if he plays something like WAG to the left of Blues Year, he keeps ACPY. Uh, there's not a ton of bingos with ACPY. So he's probably going to have to fish again. Or not fish, but just you know, make another cleaning up the rack sort of play the following turn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the other thing that, uh, that that Jesse probably is noticing is that the Z is also unseen, and Z is, I think, if you look at the area around Omerta and the area around Bluesia, and that's a very big hot spot for the Z. True. Hmm. Uh, lots of lots of points if they place there. Um, so. He, he, I mean, he can either. I guess he can hope that he gets the Z, or, or he can think about maybe playing something there now. For Jesse Day, uh, if he were to draw the Z on the next turn, assuming he kept AG in some form, Gaze would be a very nice uh, overlap on top of Omerta that would get him back in without having to bingo and. One of those things you're looking for in this situation is how can I come back uh, without having to let me go out of the bag? So lots of things for him to consider. Um, Rob Rubinsky was talking about board geometry a little bit earlier on and um, how Dave was controlling it potentially with the play of Foxfires. But he's all, Jesse's also got to think about uh, board geometry and scoring options after he makes his move, what he can leave for himself, uh, how he can limit uh, Dave potentially because other than you know, looking at the pool from Jesse's point of view, the Z and maybe the F, uh, it's not going to be the easiest for uh, easy points for Dave as far as with the big tiles. There's lots to consider here. But Jesse, on the other hand, has lots of options knowing what he does about the letters in his rack. I'm just thinking about. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so are you? Go ahead. No, I, I think I think uh, one thing is that. You have to kind of balance. One is that you want to pick up the Z yourself. Yeah. And the other thing that is that he might have it. So, uh, in a way, you have to, you know, play something which maximizes your score if you pick up the Z. But at the same time, you know, if he has it, uh, it's not going to be too easy for him. I mean, if you can find a play like that, I think that that would be the, the ideal. But uh, it's, maybe it's not that easy. 
do you think maybe if you're Jesse, you just think um, if Dave has the Z, you're just losing and you just concede those cases and play for the other cases? I, I don't know. I mean, you're only yeah, 50. Like a Z play is going to put you down by even more than that. The thing is that, yeah, the thing is that, I mean, those those spots are hot, but I think there are still other spots, um, you know, for good score for, for Jesse. That's true. Yeah. I, I, I think that, um, yeah, I'm really not sure. He's probably debating which, which, which spot to take right now. Yeah, I see Brett and chat kind of saying the same thing I was saying, that if Dave has the Z, you're just dead anyway. I, that might be true. I don't know for sure. Just asking questions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this one is very much worth spending the time on uh, from Jesse's point of view. Absolutely. We give Jesse a lot of grief on these streams for uh, taking his time in uh, extravagant ways, one could say, but there are a lot of situations where it's warranted, and this is definitely one of them. This is one, and it's not just to win the game, but it's also stay in contention to win the tournament <sighs> altogether. So yeah. there's a lot yeah. riding on what he does on this turn. Yeah. For those of you just joining us and getting caught up on the tournament situation, Jesse Day must win this game to stay alive in his quest to be World Cup champion. If he loses this one, he's out. Yeah. So so what I was thinking about, I mean, one of the things that I, possibly I was thinking about was playing something like W, A, either G or the P um, beside Blue's ear. And that, that's, I think that's decent because it sets up Z, A something, you know, if you pick up Z. But at the same time, it kind of also restricts, you know, something above Omerita with the Z. So it still, give good, it still gives good points. Um, something like that maybe all right we have an update from table two uh will anderson was at table two playing david eldar and he needed a win to stay in contention and against david eldar will anderson lost by 300 points oh. final score of david eldar 689 will 389 so uh in in a shocking fashion will has been i don't want to say knocked out entirely because if dave loses this game then there's still a chance of some sort of comeback but um a devastating loss for Will. No other wow. way to put it. Lost by 300. Um, yeah, Will had an amazing run to come back from that 4-7 and seven start. So, absolutely. Uh, being in this position at all is already uh, <laughs> rather unusual, but unfortunate way to start the day for sure. Uh, yeah. So Cesar asks, Dave is Gibsonized if he wins this game, right? I yes, believe so correct. mathematically. Yes. Uh, we'll confirm that uh, on paper, uh, but yes. 100%, sure. that's true. Yeah, Dave is playing for the championship right now. If he loses, mm -hmm. though, it gets... All sorts of crazy. We'll talk about that later if it happens. Nice choice by Jesse, I think. Uh, maybe opening up a couple of lines. And uh, yeah, I think he's trying to go for the Z fish. All right, updating the score and the pool now. It is 364 to 344. Dave leads by 20. And we have seven tiles in the bag now. So a fairly close game. And we'll see what Dave can do with this rack. It's not great. Yeah, I, I, I might have played something like walk just now. Uh, yeah, that would have been an option. Yeah, I, I like the I like the Z setup. The Z E setup. And I think keeping the Y for Y A H. Or you know, beside a new run is also useful. Yeah, but I think what Jesse is going for now is uh, you know creating another potential bingo line. Um, keeping oh he keeps the G and the C and the P so that's not ideal but uh, he can potentially massage it over the next one or two turns uh, he still can play he can he can still set up the Z uh, like playing something like gap you know which sets up for uh, RG or at the same time OG interesting but, yeah 
yeah. But uh, I think he's at least opening that line, which creates some outside chances for him to. Ooh, face triode. Okay, that's a uh, wow. That's a lot of turnover, and I think Dave is really going for the big letters now. Yeah, he scores and nicely with Trio 29. I mean, that's pretty good. Leaving only two in the bag. And it's quite amazing the Zed is still in the bag. Wow, yeah. So it means that we have uh, the N and the Z in the bag. That is, I'm trying to refresh my feed because it's getting a little bit blurry. I will confirm in a second, but I think you're right. So Dave is drawn, Dave, Dave Foy. Okay, so yeah, NZ, NZ, the two tiles in the bag, that's correct. Tough spot for Jesse. I mean, he's down by 49 and not an easy board on which to fish for a bingo. Yeah, two in the bag. Maybe you try to fish one. Of course, Dave is uh, one of the best in the world at seeing bingos. And so whatever bingo you fish for, Dave's likely to see it and block it. Yeah, is he thinking of you know, maybe playing Gree, set up a Gree, or GIS to set up EGIS. Hmm. Yeah, Gree is very interesting. Wow. He, he could draw a cap rate, and that would fit perfectly. Uh, it looks like Mo Green points out in chat that, uh, yeah, holding the A there was key because uh, Dave can play an A of his own if Jesse plays green. Very interesting. You got to think two steps ahead. That's like a chess grandmaster way to think, to plan for that if you're Dave. But maybe he is thinking that. Yeah. Uh, if he picks up the, the, the end after playing the G of, yes, Cat Naper. Um, but. I believe that might be the only bingo available. So th that means uh, I think Dave will probably see it and he will probably block it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's right. Oh, and we happen to know that cap rate is not possible because the bag is NZ. Okay. But of course, Jesse can't know that. Jesse's point of view, he yeah. probably has to try for that. Uh, hello, Sultan. Nice to see you. Uh, I just stepped out when you arrived. Uh, a, a friend from uh, gaming on Discord has joined me in the chat this morning. Nice to see you. Hi. Yeah, I think I, I think what he's also going for is something that uh, plays in two spots. So, so I think that's that's. Uh, yeah the ideal for him um like i'm sure he's thinking about things like catnapper through the a in a way on the far right um like the dream scenario for jesse is one where you know both cap rate and catnapper are possible given the pool i've seen to dave but uh unfortunately that's nowhere near the case <laughs> Ooh, and he does pick up pick up the end, so he does have cat. Oh, he does have cat napper. Okay, okay. And it'll be interesting because if uh, Dave doesn't block it, which I'm sure he will, then he will pick up the Z as the last letter. Mm. Wow. Which will be, I think, I'm not sure whether he can still lose if he, he just plays something, um, hooking agree, hooking onto agree. Um, like phobia or something. And this would be a spot for Dave to use his remaining time now. <laughs> Lots on the line for him. Yeah. 
you've got to make 100% sure that you are seeing all of Jesse's possible bingos and blocking them. I guess the Z in the bag makes that easier because it's, you know, there's not that many bingos when you consider the Z. I'm pretty sure Dave is uh, sharp enough here to realize, okay, Catnapper is the one threat. Let's kill that off. He's got over four minutes on his clock, plenty of time to figure this out. It's not super challenging for a player in Dave's caliber to solve this one. But if he does miss Catnapper, he's probably going to lose. Like Phobia followed by Catnapper would be a, like a 30-point win for Jesse, yeah. So he's got to see it. Gree was a really nice play by Jesse, giving himself a chance. You know, it, it's not always easy to uh, claw victory away from the, the jaws of, of defeat, or whatever that expression is. <laughs> Jesse giving himself a chance to do that here. Yeah, uh, Lord Livgon makes a good point. Uh, unfortunate for Jesse that the unseen is so easy to solve here. No Z bombs with agree. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, if that last yeah, but, battle of the were something different from a Z, it might be a harder end game for Dave to solve, but I think the Z simplifies it quite a bit. Yeah, but yeah, it's true. He has he does have to think about the Z bombs. Um but yeah, again quite easy to see that there's nothing that faces the Z on the double letter score. Mm -hmm. Yeah, whenever there's a pre-end game with uh one tile in the bag. There's only eight permutations to look at. There's eight possible tiles that can be in the bag and thus eight possible racks Jesse can be holding. And a player of Dave's caliber who's really fast at processing this stuff can literally check all eight of the possible racks and kind of solve the end games. And I'm sure he realizes there's only a couple scenarios he's really worried about with uh, Catnapper being the most obvious one of them. You can't let Jesse bingo. Yeah, a lot of pressure on him though, I'm, I'm sure. I mean, oh uh... yeah. Yeah, at this stage. With the world watching. <laughs> Absolutely. Dave, just over two minutes left on his clock as he uh, is coming close to crunch time to make a decision. Wow. And wow, nice play. Amazing, amazing block. He did it. Looks like Davey is going to play Davey to win the championship. <laughs> <laughs> How appropriate. <laughs> and you have to be, yeah, you have to be 100% certain of, you know, that, that being the only, the only bingo, the only line, the only spot. You know, there's, there's, he just left the E wide open, the, the B wide open, agree wide open. So, I mean, no question. I mean, he's, he's seen all of it and, he knows. And I think Jesse is going to try something. Very I mean, confidently. He, he, has to. <laughs> he basically has no shot otherwise, so yeah. he has to. Yeah, always <laughs> a phone is his only hope. Yep. Yeah, per cant is not good and it's going to come off. So it's a uh, per seant and pre connect. Yeah. I think, he, yeah, he's trying to. <laughs> add some confusion to the mix yeah but i mean <laughs> there, i think i think there's also like no chance that dave would let this go this is a ten thousand dollars is on the line so i might as well try sort of like <laughs> <laughs> because uh they're both aware that it's essentially over for jesse as far as winning the championship if he doesn't get to play bingo it, so it is important to note that we're going to have a very very close race for second place which yes. means five thousand dollars is still on the line and yeah. spread matters uh like we said will just lost his game by 300 points which is going to lead to a very close race on not just wins but also spread between jesse and will for second place yes and so, in fact yeah. uh, david eldar technically put himself mathematically in the running to even hypothetically get close to first but not maybe not quite there but with dave winning here that will be moot as a point mm -hmm. but it does mean that david is alive and well in the race for second place mm -hmm. 
And Dave tries, well, not Dave, Jesse tries and carpet now. Second. <laughs> <laughs> he not realize that his spread matters because it really, really does matter for $5,000. Oh boy. Yeah, we, we had a we had a few jokes in the chat just now, like uh, uh, Sonic Rick asking, wouldn't Encaptor sim higher than Percant? Because <laughs> it places the P on, on the on the double letter score. And we have uh, Brett uh, Brett Bass saying he's really end crept now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Rob points out correctly that Jesse probably doesn't know Will lost by so much. That's true. He very That's likely true. does not know that. That's a good point. Uh, Gertie asks, is he okay for spread? given Will's 300-point defeat. Well, we'll get uh, updated spreads here momentarily. It's going to be close, the short answer. Uh, what I can say is that Jesse Day was at plus 805 going into this game, so it will likely be in the high sixes um, for his spread after this game, if not low sevens, somewhere in that range. So handshakes going all around now, and congratulations to Dave Weekend, I think. That's right. We can have a confirmation from the tournament director. It is official. Dave Weekend is your World Cup champion. Congratulations to Dave. Yeah. He's going to be $10,000 richer, and he's going to be the World Cup champ. I'm going to say I gave Dave literally the last cup of caffeinated coffee this morning. We ah. had exactly one cup left in the uh, in the amazing beverage receptacle, and uh, Dave had walked by to get his just after I poured mine. I was like, Dave, you need this more than I do. <laughs> that was in reference to the 0-4 yesterday, so nice to see him... Uh, right the ship and claim that title. He's had a fantastic run, um, a string of wins in the whole tournament, aside from that for uh, last afternoon. Nice to see it. Dave's been playing very well, uh, well-deserved. Yeah, and you see the players that are gathering around to congratulate Dave. I saw him get a hug there from Terry Kang, I believe. I think Puni Sham is on the frame there as well, giving him a little pat on the back. Dave's one of the true great guys of Scrabble, and I think everybody there is pretty happy to see him, him pull this off. No slight at all to Jesse or Will or anybody else who are great players as well, but uh, a very, very deserving champion as everyone here in the room acknowledges. Yeah, we still have we still have the fight for second place, though. I mean, Absolutely. Yes. And on that note, I'm going to have to take a phone call to talk about pairings with my co-directors. So I'm going to take a step out. Okay. I will be back for the following uh, two rounds, and we will have a very, very exciting race for second place coming up soon. So don't go anywhere.